So let's move on to what would it look like if I'm accessing arrays? How do array, arrays work in, in, in C and assembly? So this is in C and this is in assembly. So let's like write a simple declaration. Say I have a, a array called grades. Let's say there are four grades and because they're grades, I'm gonna define them as a character. So which means that in assembly, this is gonna to translate to grades space, how much? How many bytes does this line need? One line. Four. Four bytes, right? Each byte, each grade is one byte. The character, one byte character. So this will be a four. So in other words, in memory somewhere at location zero X, let's say 2000, zero, 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 that's the first location in memory, I would declare a grades array, which will have four grades like that. This is grades of zero, of one, of two, of three. That's what we saw in the last one. Yeah, that's the array that I just declared. Question, you have a frown on your yeah, I was wondering why you're using four locations zero to three. Uh, you tell me how many locations does it have? It's taking a four. So what are the indexes? Indexes, where do indexes start? Where is the first element? You don't call it the first element, you call it the zeroth element. The zeroth element, the one element, the second element, and the third element. That makes up four elements, right? The arrays of size four, so the indexes go from zero to n minus one, in this case, four minus one. So that's the last element has an index of three. Yeah. So, so let's say immediately afterwards, I declared a uh, u int. I'm just gonna make this up, u int 16 underscore t. I'm gonna call this id. If I declare an id Im immediately after that, this is my id and how big is this id? Two bytes. Each of these is one byte, and there are a total of four of these. And I have an ID which is two bytes, right? And it's going to be 16 and the first thing. Yeah. So let's define another another one here. I'm going to declare a, a const u int 16 underscore t. I'm going to define four IDs. I'm going to call that an array called IDs of four. Where will, where will this guy get its memory cache? So this 2000, 2001, two, three, four, and five. The big button. Will he get its memory at 2000? Yeah. It will be in wrong, it won't be here, right? So in fact, his memory will be up somewhere here. I'm not gonna, somewhere up here. In fact, up there, there will be your IDs and this is IDs of zero and so on. And this address will be somewhere in ROM and it's probably a zero, 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 one, zero, zero. I'm just making this up again, right? And there'll be five of these guys, four of these guys, one, two, three, four. This will be the one location, the second location and the third location. And each of these right now, I'm not doing it properly, but this is two bytes, two bytes and so on, right? I'm just writing them as in one square because I think of them as logically as one unit, but they're two bytes, right guys? Because they're doing 16. So say I wrote an instruction like this in my code. Say I wrote an instruction that says, uh, grades of two equals a. This is in C. 
what does this translate to? How does the, what code will this look like in assembly? This is in C, what does the assembly equivalent of this look like? Well, this is how it's gonna look like. We're gonna do the, do, write the whole code. So we'll, it'll say something like LDR, R not equals grades. First, I'm gonna get the address of grade. But where in grade do I want to get to? Which element do I want to get to? Second element, starting from 0, 1, 2, right? I want to get to the second element. So I'm going to have to index it properly to get to the second element. So, so now I'm going to, let's move into some register R1. I'm going to move a pound, whatever A is. A, if you don't want to look up, if you don't want to look up this ASCII table, you can just put quote A like that. Right, this is a valid thing in assembly. You don't have to go and look up the uh, ASCII table and say A is uh, hex 65 or whatever it is, and I'm going to write that. You don't have to do that. You just put a single quote like that and you get the same thing. So R1 has that. Now I can say STRB R1 R0. But if I write it in R0, where, which one will I be writing? A zero to a zero. But which one do I want to write? The second location. This is where my offset comes into play. I can give an offset value of, let's say, in this case, I want to get to the not the zeroth location, one location, but the truth location. I can say pound two like this. Now, this is equivalent to what you did in LC3. If you guys remember in LC3, Quick side note. In LC3, you say something like STR, R0, R1, or whatever it might be. STR, R1, R0, pound two. Right? That's what your LC3 is talking. Now, in LC3, we call this the gate and the offset. In, on this machine, you write the gate and the offset inside the sales bracket. But there's more. Actually, it's the nice thing about, I, I don't know if you guys ever found this annoying with LC3, but what if I wanted this offset to not be a transfer? What if I wanted it to be a register? Wouldn't that have been nice? If it would have been nice if the index were a register, because then I can just keep adding to that index to move to the next item and the next item. For example, if let's say I wanted to make all of these grades be A, I could iterate over, I would start with some register which is initially set to zero. I would make it one, two, and keep incrementing that register. So the base remains at the front, right? The base remains at gray, but the offset keeps moving down. So I should be able to change that from pound zero, pound one, pound two, and so on. I can do that in on this machine, but we can't do it on LC3. So for example, I would do something like this. I would have done something like move. R2 found two, and I can actually use R2 here. So if I were to iterate over this array, then I would make R2 initially be a zero. I would write to the first one, loop back, increment R2 by one, then write to the next location, keep doing that. That way, the it keeps its behavior the behavior of an array is the reason why the base plus offset at this in more than this is to access an array. The base being you keep yourself tethered to the base of the array and your index keeps moving down. So the offset moves, but the base stays put at the origin of the array. And that's really the, the reason why such a addressing mode exists, except in LC3, you can't do that. Here you can, yeah. So make make it a habit to use it that way and not use it the LC3 way. The LC3 way to do it would have been you keep incrementing R0 rather than the offset. The offset is always a zero and you increment R0 by one and R0 by one and keep incrementing as, as you move along. Yeah. So let's do one more instruction. Say I wanted to do something like ID equals, I want to get the, let's do 
um, IDs of two. I want to get the second student ID, whatever that was. By the way, I, I should have done this. There's a mistake here. I should have in, initialized these to some to values because it's a constant. I should have put some initial values in there. So I'm assuming that I put some values and I don't care what those values are. Yeah, because there's no point calling something a constant if you don't initialize it. If you don't initialize it, what value do you have? Right? So I initialize it to some values. So now I want to do this, which is I want to get get my second student's ID into a variable called ID. So let's write the code. How would the code go about? First, I want to get the student's ID. So what do I do? The second student ID. So I'm going to load into some register R0 again. The base. This is, the, this is where the array base is. I'm going to call this the base. And then I'm going to do a LDR R1 R0. But what offset should I use? How do I get to this guy? What is the offset from here? Two, he said. People agree that it's two. He says thumbs up. Anybody thumbs thumbing down? Thumbing down. Why? It is four. Why four? Each is two bytes. So this guy would be zero. This guy would be one, a two, a three, and that one is the one we are looking for, four. So the offset has to be a pound, four. In fact, there's a formula for that. If you are trying to get to the second element, you take that second element and multiply it by the size of each element. If the element is of size two bytes, you multiply by two, so that's why you get the two times two, which is four. If I wanted to get the third element, that would be four, five, and six. Right? So this value, the offset is the offset I compute here has both the index multiplied by the size of each element. Because this index here happens to be two, which is this is my index, right? This is my index. And the size of each element, because it's a 14, sorry, 16 bit element, that is a two. Uh, different color. That's a two. So that's two times two. That's where we get the four. Yeah. So interestingly, I don't have to say that in C. Why do I not have to say that in C? Why did I not say IDs of because C is smart enough to figure out that IDs is an array of 16 bit values. So it knows that you meant the, of these four elements, you meant the second element. And so it internally is doing all this for you. So you don't have to worry about it. But in assembly, the onus is on you. The burden is yours to bear to make this computation. Yeah. Because remember, this declaration, both these declarations, let's write that, these declarations are grade space one and ID space two. And this declaration here, this declaration here translates to a DCD, sorry, DCW, it will be a IDs, DCW, and you will write your four IDs, comma, separated like that. Whatever the four IDs are, right? So the, there is no way for the for the C, the assembler to really know what you what you're doing with it. It is up to you. It just puts bytes in memory, but it doesn't remember what it, what they, what their data type is or anything like that. Yeah. Oh, by the way, did I make any mistakes here? 
This is a valid one. I didn't finish it, but this is an NDR. It should be an LDR H, right? I thought you guys would catch me. That's an LDR H because that's a given 16. IDs are given 16. So I have to say LDR H. And then I'm going to store this into ID. I still haven't put it in the ID. How do I put it there? I'm going to do an LDR R0 equals ID this time. And I'm going to store into. R1 into R0. So first I have to get what's on the right side and then I have to store it into this address that's on the left side. So this is these four instructions together with that assignment statement. Yeah. All right. So I'd urge all of you to practice this as much as possible because, because as I said, this is how we kind of internalize the idea of C actually eventually translating to SM.